Jerome Corsi, and today is Monday, June 5th, 2023. Thank you for joining us here on thetruthcentral.com. We're doing a podcast every weekday. Uh, let's get uh, right into the news today. Uh, the first story I want to cover uh, has to do with the artificial intelligence issue, which is really, I think, increasingly coming to the fore. We're, I'm seeing a lot more about it in terms of evaluating the risks. Uh, what caught my attention was that uh, last week, at the end of the week, the um, leaders from OpenAI, Google DeepMind, Anthropic, and other AI labs warned that future systems, future AI systems, could be as deadly as pandemics and nuclear weapons. Uh, so there was a uh, an open letter that was signed by quite a lot of the top people in the AI companies, names that are not generally known to the public, but anyone in the field knows that these are uh, well-known people. There were 350 executives, researchers, and engineers working in AI that were warning that uh, this new generation of chatbots and other AI are going to have a lot of powerful characteristics where they can uh, fake news, they can fake videos, they can uh, basically ha have run campaigns on their own to be disinformation campaigns, they could do mind control. Uh, the This has been an issue about AI from the very beginning, is whether or not if we advance artificial intelligence, is it a friend or an enemy? Would it turn on human beings? Would AI seek to preserve AI at the expense of human beings. It's one of the very, very early issues was whether you could program a robot not to harm humans. And that's an extremely complicated question because you can't pro program humans not to, to harm humans. And um, I I'm finding this to be a, these risks, again, we have another end of the world kind of risk with AI. We've got the pandemics. We have a war going in the Middle East and uh, it, with already with Iran funding more and more attacks against Israel from Hamas and uh, the Gaza Strip and from Hezbollah and Lebanon. Uh, over the weekend, I watched this uh, new pandemic. This is Pandemic 3, which is called The Great Awakening. It's a documentary experience from the creators of the pandemic. It's available on The High Wire. Uh, you can go to thehighwire.com, I believe, is the URL for it. And if you uh, go there, you can, it's, it's a great, it takes about three hours. They have a red carpet and there's a lot of people introduced in it. Uh, and I, I think I was in Plandemic 2 uh, when the, uh, on the, on the hydroxychloroquine issue during the pandemic. I was working with Dr. Zelenko. Dr. Zelenko's in Plandemic 3. Uh, this is a very, very important video. And it, um, it heightens the awareness of the extent to which the, woke agenda is about totalitarianism and it exposes this constant uh, psychology of totalitarianism which is to create a crisis and then to propose a solution that's not a solution but has more control so the pandemic and it goes through fauci and the history of creating uh, these kind of false cures he did it 20 or 30 years ago with aids uh, with this AZT, which killed people. Then we have the pan pandemic, and now we've got a lot of concerns about all the issues of the uh, vaccinations and what's happening with regards to them. And the pandemic, I think, is really a, a must-see video, and I would encourage you to watch it, all three hours of it, and to um, share it widely. I think this should be seen by, hopefully, billions of people. Uh, let's continue here with the news. Uh, today, I want to go to the second story, which is uh, the, this anti-Western nuclear club is rapidly forming, and it's, it's around the BRICS. They're going to be meeting uh, starting pretty soon now in Saudi Arabia, but you've got a combination here. of The BRICS are, by the way, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. 
And this anti-Western nuclear club is including North Korea. This is extremely dangerous because these are the groups that are going to constantly threaten the United States. So Kim Jong-un has ordered this January this country carry out the exponential expansion of its nuclear arsenal and the manufacturing of more powerful ICBMs. This is a story in the uh, Gatestone Institute. And Iran, of course, is pushing forward with nuclear weapons, and the Biden administration is doing nothing to stop them. In fact, uh, it looks like the John Kerry and the others will negotiate a release of a lot of the sanctions. Iran may get its hands on billions of dollars of Iranian assets that are currently under embargo by the U.S. government. So uh, the basically Iran, there's been recent reports from the Iran state-controlled Afkar News saying American soil is now within the range of Iranian bombs. Same type of ballistic missile technology used to launch a satellite could carry nuclear, chemical, or even biological weapons to wipe Israel off the map, hit U.S. bases and allies in the region and U.S. facilities, and target NATO even in the far west of Europe. So again, the resolve to stop Iran from having nuclear weapons does not seem to be a key priority for the uh, Biden administration. And I've been constantly pointing out how dangerous this is because once we get to a situation where Iran has nuclear weapons, I've been predicting since I wrote Atomic Iran in 2006 that Iran would use these weapons to attack Israel. And Israel looks like it's prepared for a strike on Iran. But this, is, again, is another one of the very dangerous moments where we could have an escalating nuclear war very easily through a series of miscalculations. I was watching last night on one of the um, channels, the this Apocalypse World War I, how a series of miscalculations after the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand and uh, that began World War I. The, the countries just one after the other went to war, happened again in World War II, not with quite the same rapidity, and if we had World War III, it could cascade equally through a series of miscalculations. But this nuclear club where you've got Russia and China supporting as their surrogates, Iran and North Korea, and we're fighting proxy wars, which we fought since North Korea, by the war, Korean War, 1950s, Vietnam is a proxy war against China, United States against China, essentially, fighting through Vietnam. And now we've got Ukraine uh, fighting Russia, which is NATO and the United States, the proxy war against Russia. So if uh, China and Russia decide to retaliate by upping the nuclear stakes in Iran and North Korea, we're entering an extremely dangerous world. Uh, the other point of, of the same theme, there's an article that was out by Natasha Wright, which I thought was very interesting, essentially saying that there is a new world order underway, and there's no doubt in my mind that this is happening that essentially we've got the BRICS nations, which are unified against the United States. And this is, again, uh, Russia, China, uh, BRICS, Brazil, Russia, China, India, China, and, and South Africa. And they're forming strong trading groups, strong trading associations. And this is going to quickly escalate into where the uh, they may have their own currency. They're going to try to... Uh, de-dollarize so that the dollar is no longer used in this, as a standard of international currency. Uh, these are, and the pandemic also talks about this new world order and how there has been a move and constantly have been going towards this move to create a one world government. George H.W. Bush announced to Congress the new world order. Well, we don't really need a new world order as far as I'm concerned. A new world order, one world government will simply be a totalitarian. World. Uh, but if U.S. dominance is, which has been falling since the downfall of the Berlin Wall, we've been under constant attack. And I'm saying essentially that this has been a conscious deconstruction of the United States by the neo-Marxist left. As I pointed out 
and have been trying to write books on this to get the word out. Uh, they've done well. Uh, I'm going to t- make additional steps now to get them even more read. But the book I wrote on the truth about global warming and climate change, which is the truth about energy, global warming, and climate change, is done extremely well. But I cover a story on that in a minute. And you can find all these books, of course, on the uh, the True Central website under books. And you can order them through Amazon with those blue bars. In print is the second of this series. This is a Great Awakening trilogy. And I thought it was very interesting. The pandemic is also calling theirs the Great Awakening trilogy. The second book is The Truth About Neo-Marxism, Cultural Maoism, and uh, Anarchy. And uh, these themes are very consistent with the pandemic, that in fact we have a neo-Marxist attempt to destroy capitalism with lies, uh, disinformation, uh, and running these created uh, realities of a, you know, disease, which is going to force everybody into uh, this mass obedience. Well, the if human beings are very much manipul- able to be manipulated. So when the pandemic came, all those who were convinced that we needed to get the vaccines were adamantly opposed to those who refused to get the vaccines. Uh, you couldn't travel. You couldn't do, you couldn't go to sports events. There's all kinds of things you couldn't do unless you got vaccinated. Well, this kind of mass psychosis is common, and we're doing a repeat of World War I, World War II. We're doing a repeat of the Russian Revolution, and the stories I'm going to cover now uh, are also tied together in that the next story, Ireland is actually thinking now about killing 200,000 cows to fight climate change. This is insanity. Uh, the Irish Bureau said the Department of Agriculture plans to kill 200,000 dairy cows over the next three years to combat climate change. Why? Well, because dairy cows fart methane. So we're going to kill our food supply. And um, this is what happens to every cultural revolution, Maoist like cultural revolution, or in the collective farms of 19. 19- 20s and 30s in when Russia was, went communist. They, these dictatorial regimes kill millions with famine. They destroy the food supply. They break up the family. They attack God. And once we've attacked God, we have a basically a godless world into which the demons return. And these satanic demons, the gods of old, and Jonathan kahn has got a great book on this, called The Return of the Gods. I'll show the cover in a minute. But the whole theme of the book is that the constant, these were ancient. The gods were wanted to replace um, the God of the Bible with essentially a satanic view that human beings could perfect themselves with transhumanism. Then they begin to engage in transgenderism so that they you know, the gods mix men, women, all this gets mixed up, and they end up killing babies. And Jonathan Kahn's point is that hopefully with the reversal of Roe v. Wade, we're returning to sanity, but our own destruction of our own food supply means that there, these demons, the World, you know, World Economic Forum demons, Klaus Schwab's demons, these people who think that they can rule the world with a small number of oligarchs who are multiple billionaires. They're the wealthy. Everybody else is slaves. And it'll be the billionaires, their machines, and the slaves. And we're the slaves. Chris, do you want to comment on this? They are trying to find excuses to, uh, to lower the food supply around the world. A lot of these World Economic Forum types are also looking at, and you mentioned this before, you've mentioned this several times in the past as well, that they're looking to depopulate the country looking to weaken the stronger countries, but killing the food supply is, is insane. It's, it's like you just said, it's, it's absolute insanity. Just, and this is the, this is going to be the harm, the useless slaughter of all these animals means absolutely nothing. It's symbol. It's, it's symbolic. It's another way to keep the, uh, to keep the world under control. And the idea is that these one world government types can only keep us under uh, forces to comply. 
by controlling the food supply, controlling the media, and of course, controlling the money? Well, a, a good question is that, uh, and Glenn Beck had a program on this, which I watched also over the weekend. It was saying, uh, how is this, how is this working out for you? I mean, how's this plan working? What do you think? Is it good or bad? I mean, this is a bad idea. There's good ideas and bad ideas. Killing the cows is a bad idea. Eating bugs is a bad idea. Human beings are carnivores, and the idea that we are going to kill the planet because we have cows is absolutely insanity. I, I thought the left, or at least I thought the liberals who were for this, were, were against killing animals senselessly. But their, their structures along, their, their wind turbines are killing, um, uh, killing whales. Their, their policies are killing livestock. They're killing animals. It's, it's absolutely nuts. Yeah, and it's, it, it is about a death culture, essentially. The whole left's neg negation. And that's one of the major points I make in the, my book on, uh, that's coming out on the truth about neo-Marxism, cultural Maoism, because they're different. Neo-Marxism neo is basically a, uh, of saying that, well, Marx may have been wrong. We didn't in 1848 have the workers of the world rise. So, we, but we still have to destroy communism. We have to destroy capitalism. We got to destroy capitalism. Really, we have to destroy communism. But they say we have to destroy capitalism. So the cultural Maoists, after Gramsci, attack the culture, you know, culture wars, and then they go after the family. They go after God, and this progression ends up ultimately in starvation, killing millions of people during uh, the Russian collective farm. Uh, experiment was a dramatic failure, although the West praised it. I cover this in the book. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, millions died in Russia. Millions of Ukrainians were starved to death under the Great Leap Forward in Mao. Millions of Chinese, they, they, 40 to 50 or 60 million Chinese were killed by Mao. And I love that. The great, the great Leap Forward, the Great Leap off the uh, Brooklyn Bridge, if you tell me. You know, if you ask great me. Leap into Hell. That's right. It was. And, then, and these are, it is basically satanic. And once, once God's abandoned, uh, you get Marcuse, who's promoting sexuality and actually promotes Marquis de Sade as the epitome of liberation. What, was Caligula busy? Yeah, I mean, these guys are Caligula. They are insane. All right, let's continue moving on. I want to cover as much as we can today. Uh, the um, next story that caught my attention was that uh, another global warming story, which is that uh, Saudi Arabia is basically unilaterally pretty much said on Sunday it's going to embark on a complex effort to adjust production as it aimed to halt the recent slide in oil prices. But if they reduce supply by 1 million barrels a day, Saudi Arabia plans to have uh, the price of gasoline in the United States and oil around the world increase. So this is likely to become a goal of OPEC plus, which includes Russia. Uh, the, the pressure to reduce uh, oil output by um, to in order to maintain price, it reflects the fact that the world economic condition is slowing down. But this could mean as much as a I've seen predictions as high as a five to ten dollar rise in price at peak demand times this summer on the price of gasoline. And if these things happen, it's going to be a huge bite to the American people. It's going to be this is going to hurt now. I've, con I've got, I'm writing constantly right now, and I want you to be aware of the books that I'm putting out because I think that they're going to be critical to being able to understand what's going on. The um, current book I've got out right now is this um, Truth About uh, the, this is about how the uh, coming global crash will create an historic gold rush. And Chris, you want to show where people can see the various uh, places where we're broadcasting. Please take a look at this book because this book explains how we're intentionally causing the American economy to, to crash. And this is a planned destruction of the American economy, which was culminated, I think, largely by this debt ceiling, which just means spend more money. And we're, we're going to be under so much debt, we're going to collapse. Chris? Right here. And you can find the book, by the way, all the books here on the truthcentral.com, the book section. You see the uh, little drop menu here. You want to hear the program you haven't if this may be your first time or you want to watch it on rumble or uh, youtube it's right here 
click right here from the True Central. Or if you prefer to listen to the program on several sites, uh, several locations, we have iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many others wherever you get your podcasts. You can also listen to it right here on thetruthcentral.com. Click, click the play button or hit where it says the podcast on the menu. We have all the shows listed right here. You can hear from day one on through today. Don't forget as well, you can find Dr. Corsi on social media here. Click on these little icons that uh, follow his Twitter page. Follow him on Twitter. Follow on Facebook, Truth Social, LinkedIn, and anywhere you can find Dr. Jerome Corsi. Yeah, the uh, prosperity in Europe has been based on the cheap energy from Russia. As Russia cuts it off, uh, Russia can basically damage Western Europe. It already has. And Western Europe, with Ireland and the others, going to want to now kill cows. Uh, they're not particularly imaginative in how they're going to deal uh, with the future because they're, they're deconstructing. You put these neo-Marxists in charge, put the woke generation in charge, and we will have chaos. And that's their plan. Their plan is to confuse, to deconstruct. It's fundamentally schizophrenia. Uh, I've decided for a while, I pretty much took a, took a break after you know the Mueller investigation wanted to put me in prison. And they did everything they could. They offered me a plea deal. They thought I had a tie to Assange, which I did not have. And uh, be, they wanted me, then they said they will put me in prison because saying I'm lying, gave me a plea deal. Well, if I had taken that plea deal, they would have made their Russian collusion case because they would say, see, of course, he had a source to Assange. He just didn't want to tell us who it was. That would have been well, all they needed. That was the last piece they needed to say Don, Donald Trump had, in, had engaged in Russian collusion to steal the 2016 election. We now know with the Durham report, that was complete nonsense. But to this, this woke left, and the Department of Justice is a woke left organization. It's like the Stasi, the KGB. Uh, and I, by the way, I saw uh, uh, Dorsey, who, you know, the co-founder of Twitter, actually endorsed Robert Kennedy over the week, Robert Kennedy Jr. for president. Now, I don't know if that's controlled opposition or not, so they're just setting that up in order to further destroy Robert Kennedy Jr. But Robert Kennedy Jr. is a very divisive force within the Democratic Party and has a strong potential to be able to be threatening to the Obama agenda, which I continue uh, I continue to predict that uh, Obama will have Michelle run for president. And uh, Joel Gilbert has been doing videos on this, and he's done a very, very good DVD which I recommend everyone watch. We'll get that featured maybe uh, later this week. Maybe we'll have Joel on the program. But at any rate, I think we're, uh, I'm getting more active again. For a while, I had uh, a lot of pressure on me after Mueller to just drop out, not to have the FBI knock on the door again. Well, I think that pressure is alleviated, and uh, I've, I'm going to begin much more presence in the media, as I had before, we're going to continue the Truth Central. I'm going to continue writing books. I'm writing articles on uh, both AmericanThinker.com and The Gateway Pundit. I'll be doing more of those, hopefully, even this week. Uh, this is a critical period of time in American history, and we're fighting demons. We're fighting powers and principalities. We're fighting evil. And um, this agenda, which is godless, I think threatens to bring down the United States. Uh, God willing, that will not happen. Now, my favorite, John Kerry, along with wanting to kill the cows, here's John Kerry. John Kerry, who's now our special presidential envoy for climate. Well, uh, and he's saying that, again, we, we have to tackle the agriculture sector in order to get net zero emissions by 2050. So he uh, it says that agriculture creates 33% of the world's total greenhouse gases. So therefore, basically, we've got to destroy farming, which they're doing in the Netherlands. I mean, this is an insanity. But these people intend to cause starvation. Uh, Chris, if we just put up on the screen about this John Kerry, I want to show the book here. This is the book I wrote on Unfit for Command. I wrote that in uh, 2004 with John O'Neill. John O'Neill was my good friend. John O'Neill and I had known each other since we were about 17. He was a swift boat commander who commanded Kerry's boat. After Kerry left Vietnam, I had 
bird dog carry when he was with the Vietnam veterans against the war. I, I had a, a eczema. They wouldn't take me into the military during the Vietnam war. At any rate, um, we connected John and I to do unfit for command. And we, we made the argument that John Kerry was disgraceful in his bogus, you know, purple heart awards. And he basically was trying to emulate Jack Kennedy Jack Kennedy had PT boats in World War II, so Kerry wanted swift boats in Vietnam. Kerry was about as anti-American as you can get. I don't think there was an enemy of the United States that Kerry has not liked. And he was uh, prominent in Obama's decision to let Iran essentially continue with nuclear weapons and to send them airplanes full of cash, Iran, under Kerry, who was Secretary of State. Now he's climate czar. Kerry has ruined everything he's touched in, 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 as anti-American as you get. And I've opposed him. I'm pleased that we kept him from being president. But uh, that's not the end of the story. He's still around. And what he's saying is that food systems themselves constitute a significant amount of emissions just in the way in which we do the things we've been doing. The growing population of the planet, we just crossed the threshold of 8 billion fellow citizens around the world. Emissions from the food system alone are projected to cause another half a degree of warming by mid-century. Well, John Kerry, who cares? Would, you're going to kill? How many billions are you going to kill? How many cows are you going to kill, John Kerry? Well, if that's not enough. Here we go with um, FBI Director Christopher Wray. Uh, the FBI is worthless these days. So is the Department of Justice. It just goes after you know, white supremacists. You know, again, the, the left is only about creating divisions. Martin Luther King wanted there to be racial equality, that race was no longer a significant characteristic. These people on the left want to heighten race. They want to demonize whites. And the Department of Justice is in on the act. They wanted to define as criminal, and it will soon be criminal because we're white. So he, he's finally admitted, Ray has finally admitted that he will show to, uh, to, to you know, uh, House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer of Kentucky and to the Democrat ranking member uh, Jamie Raskin from Maryland. He's going to show this document, which supposedly contains this allegations that uh, Joe Biden as president was, when he was vice president, engaged in a bribery conspiracy to alter U.S. policy in exchange for monetary gain for his family's business. Well, this shouldn't be news. Peter Schweitzer has been reporting this for years. I've been reporting it for years. This is insanity that we don't have this to be common knowledge. Biden family has viewed politics as a way to gain. Chris, you want to comment on it? Absolutely. The Biden family has been in business for a long time. It's been exposed to, to an extent over the years, but this could be, and I hate to use the term smoking gun, it's been used over and over again, but this could be it. Problem is, the reason why Joe Biden and the rest of his cohorts will get away with it is because they are, in fact, Democrats. If you're a Republican, you can't get, a, you can't get away with uh, asking somebody out on a date. But if you are a Democrat, you can get away with all sorts of uh, uh, crimes. You can get, all sorts, uh, get away with all sorts of uh, uh, scandals. Do you remember... I'm sure you remember Fast and Furious during the Obama administration. Oh, of course, certainly. It was, it was a whole big thing. Even the journalists had to report about it. And all of a sudden, the second it, it, uh, it, it's heard in Congress and Barack Obama claims, or at least he, uh, he uh, pushes, what's the word? He, <clears throat> he, he uses executive privilege as his own defense. Nothing happens after that. Everything seemed to have dispersed. It was almost like the journalists were like, oh, hold on a second. Well, fast he, said, and, he just said executive privilege. Nothing else to see here. Well, we don't have to do anything now. Fast and Furious was a scheme that right. Eric Holder is, uh, was in the F, you know, Eric Holder Department of Justice. They decided they would um, get weapons right. sold to Mexico or in the hands of the cartels through gun dealers in the West. They actually went out and told gun dealers to do push these weapons into the market. And then when the Mexican cartels used the guns or when the guns got out into crimes, they were going to say, look, this gun violence, we've got it. It was, not, it was an attempt to end the Second Amendment. But they got away with it. 
Well, they got away with it, yes, but you know, one of uh, uh, one of the border patrol uh, was killed. Right. I investigated that at the time. I found that the guns that he was killed with were fast and furious. I mean, this was a huge, huge issue at the time, and of course, it did all get swept under the rug. You can't. Democrats don't get blamed for anything, and if when they're caught, the Department of Justice excuses them. Thank you, John Durham, for nothing. And the media, the media gave him a pass because normally there would be extensive investigations into what happened. But as soon as Obama said executive privilege, it, it, everybody just folded up, or at least the entire mainstream media folded up and walked away. Mainstream saying, oh, media is happened. mainstream media is worthless. It's just right. a mouthpiece for the CIA. Exactly. And you know, you basically got no truth being told to the American people. It's why the truth central is so important. And uh, the whole idea that. Republicans, Donald Trump can be prosecuted. They've got a whole group of another special prosecutor fabricating <laughs> crimes, and they're going to do everything they can to make sure Donald Trump is under indictment or in prison when the 2024 election comes along because they're scared to death of him. These people can't stand the truth. You know, it's like Satan in, 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 in uh, an exorcism. You know, you hold the cross in front of them, they're, that's what kills them. Sprinkle holy water on them. These people hate God. <laughs> True. And, and at least so they're such. Well, they're they're demons. They don't they want to I mean any group that wants to kill babies, and that's their primary political rallying call, you know, the, the right of a woman to choose. Well what yeah, okay, choose to kill a life that she didn't have to bring in the big to into being in the first place. That's excusable. Uh that anything you want to do is okay because you wanted to do it. Mutilate children, you know, get them to do gender transformation, sex operations when they're, you know, not old enough to really understand what sex is about. These are crimes against humanity. Before that, decades before that, the pills were thrown down their throats. Uh, little boys who would act up in class a little bit, you know, people, you know, third graders who acted like third grade boys were fed uh, uh, Prozac and lithium or whatever it was, uh, whatever the drug of the day was back in the day. Yeah, there was a, that, that attention deficiency disorder and all these things they prescribed, which were basically a uh, end masculinity among boys, make sure that they uh, cower down and don't misbehave. You know, exactly. that's, this has been, we are going through an insanity. And uh, I've been writing about it as, as as fast and furious as I can. Uh -huh. And I'll I saw be... what you did there. I had, had to point that one out. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. And uh, we'll continue. So uh, let's wrap it up in order to stay within time today, Chris. Thank you for uh, hosting this, and we'll be back tomorrow. This is Dr. Jerome Corsi today with thetruthcentral.com. Please like it, spread the word. We're on many social media platforms. We're going to be expanding the show to have a greater reach. And I, I always say, in the end, God always wins. God will win here, too. Uh, it may be some extreme measures. We may go through some things we're not particularly going to enjoy. Uh, in the spirit of Second Chronicles 7.14, we should get down on our knees and repent that we allowed God to be taken out of the schools starting in the 1940s and 1950s. That was the beginning of this insanity, or maybe even earlier when the communists decided in the 20s and 30s they were going to destroy the family. Uh, this is Dr. Jerome Corsi. Uh, thank you for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow. God bless. <laughs>